Hello everybody and welcome to this, the first episode of my Kerbal Space Program tutorial series. Today we're going to be looking at the absolute bare basics of the game, which is rocket construction and basic flight controls. So uh, first things first, let's get a new game started. Uh, those of you who want to can of course edit your options and things, uh, get your system running exactly as you want it to. Those of you with high-end machines can run at high resolutions and so on. Uh, Kerbal Space Program at its basic level isn't particularly demanding, but when you start getting lots of modules together and constructing very large ships, problems can occur. So bear that in mind, and remember if you're running into problems you can always change down the, uh, the graphics settings. Okay, this is essentially your main interface. You have these four buildings here. This is your space plane hangar. We're not going to worry about space planes initially, but they're essentially for constructing shuttles and uh, so on and so forth. Uh, they're basically horizontal launch systems, but they're, they're a lot of fun to mess around with, but we're not going to be doing too much with them initially. This is your tracking station. Once you've got uh, various items in orbit and probes being sent to other planets and so on, this lets you keep track and control multiple flights. This is the launch pad, this is obviously where you launch the rockets that you construct, and this is your vehicle assembly building, the VAB. So click on this, and it'll take us into the vehicle assembly building interface. Okay, so the first stage of rocket construction is to choose a command pod. Uh, we're going to go with this command pod mark 1 to begin with, as it's a nice, simple, basic one. Uh, these ones don't have too much of an impact on uh, your rocket. Um, obviously the size is going to be the main issue, but we'll get to that a bit further down the line. But initially, just pick command pod mark 1, and we can see the part there. You can click on a part, and you don't need to drag, you can just click and move it up and down. And if you use the right mouse button, you can tilt your view to move it backwards and forwards as well. You see here, so you can get the positioning about right. This takes a little bit of practice, but after a while you should be able to move parts and position them how you want to with relative ease. There is a tutorial in the game itself dealing with this, so I would recommend giving that a look as well, but uh, we'll obviously cover the basics here too. Alright, so let's build our first rocket. We're going to build an extremely simple rocket design here. Uh, all rockets basically consist of two primary components, fuel and engines. You also have other components such as control surfaces, um, RCS thrusters, SAS systems, uh, I've got MechJeb parts because of a mod I'm running. I'm running a few mods on this so if you see parts here that you don't have, don't worry about it. Uh, I'm not going to be intentionally using any parts that uh, aren't stock though. so. Uh, I wouldn't worry too much about that. There's structural reinforcement here as well, which is useful for building space stations or strut connectors. If you're building very powerful rockets, sometimes they need a bit of support to stop ripping themselves apart. But like I say, the primary components that you will have on every single rocket without fail are your command pod, which you have to select before you can open these menus, and your fuel and your engines. So we're going to use this. This is the FLT-800 fuel tank. This is the basic fuel tank of the game, very utilitarian, holds a decent amount of fuel, isn't too heavy, um, there are other designs here as well, like you've got this big fuel tank here, and another smaller fuel tank that you can add onto this one. Um, you'll use these as you get further down the line, um, but we're pretty much good to go here by the engine, so take one of these LVT-30s, this is again very basic, very common engine, and that's it, we have a rocket. It's an extremely simple rocket, but it is a rocket nonetheless, and it will fly. So let's see how far we can get with this one. Let's give it a name. We'll call this one Test 1, not Test 12. You can save the design here. New design here will uh, take you back to the drawing board, where you start off by picking the command pod. Uh, load lets you load existing designs. You can see there's quite a few stock designs here as well as any that you put in. Uh, save, obviously we've just done, and launch. Exit takes you back to the vehicle and um, building views. So if we hit launch we can go straight to the launch pad with the rocket that we currently have in the design bay. Okay, 
So here is our rocket. It is a tiny little thing, but uh, we'll see what we can do with it. Before we do that though, let's have a quick look at the HUD and uh, familiarise ourselves with the various components of it and how they are useful. Resources gives you a very clear indication of how much you have uh, various resources in your rocket. Electrical charge, for example, is, uh, well, the amount of electricity in your batteries. Liquid fuel and oxidizer are both fuel. Uh, once you're in space, there's no oxygen, so you need an oxidizer in order to have a combustion reaction, which is basically the rocket firing. If you click on resources, you can make it stay up, or you can simply hover over it to view it as needed. Over here, you have the altimeter with the abort button there. Uh, that's useful if you want to uh, just abort the flight or if something goes horribly wrong and you need to start again. Um, atmosphere indicator here is also very useful. When you're in the lower regions it shows the atmosphere is much thicker and therefore there's more drag on the rocket. And um, We'll discuss drag a little bit further down the line. Suffice to say this rocket's going to have some drag because of that flat surface. Uh, the more aerodynamic you make your rockets the less drag they'll suffer but like I say we'll go over that in more detail a bit further down the line lights, let you put lights on and off if you have them, uh, gears again same thing, gears on and off if you have them, and brakes again on and off if you have them. Uh, the time warp here allows you to warp time. We're not going to be using that initially but leave that at one. You can also use the period and comma keys on your keyboard to increase or decrease the steps by one. Uh, also note this won't work if your ship's under acceleration so you can't really speed the rocket up whilst you're executing a burn and uh, we'll cover burns and other terminology a little bit further down the line as well for now all we want to do is just get you acquainted with the idea of the rocket and the idea of the controls down here is staging uh, staging is something that we'll discuss again a little bit further down the line but to give you a basic idea your rockets can be built with components called decouplers. So if I say build this rocket and an engine here, I can put a decoupler under it and then another rocket beneath it. I can fire the rocket down here first and then when its fuel is spent I can fire off the decoupler so it detaches and then this rocket takes over and it's not having to pull all that mass. We'll go into detail on that further down the line though. Uh, pitch, yaw and roll uh, this is just indicating to you how, how you're executing those manoeuvres. Uh, if you're familiar with flight games, you'll already be familiar with those. Staging, we leave that on that for now. Uh, docking and the orbit map is, again, something we'll look at later. But uh, docking is for basically bringing your ships together using docking ports, which is useful for constructing space stations. And the orbit map allows you to plan burns to project courses and plan trajectories for your ships extremely useful when you want to start getting to the moon and so on. This is your nav ball. Uh, this is quite difficult to explain without actually being in flight, but uh, I'll give you a basic once over anyway. This is the uh, RCS and SCS indicators. R lights up your RCS, T engages your SAS. You can also uh, flick them on and off as well. For example, F, when you hold it down, will engage SAS and uh, when you let it go it will take it off again. If you've already got it on then F will turn it off so it lets you, that lets you toggle it. But we'll look at SAS when we go back to rocket design and we build something a bit more complicated. Throttle is of course how much power you're putting into your engines. An engine at full throttle is, in, is putting out a lot of power. An engine at no throttle is putting out none. You control that with shift and control. G-force is how much G-force you're subjecting your pilot to. Get it too high and you will turn them into a pate. Down here we have Jeb Kerman. Again, you don't need to worry too much about this for now. EVA lets you get out of the rocket and uh, wander around. IVA gives you a camera view from inside the pilot's seat. Heading is the direction you are going relative to the planet. And this here is your speed relative to whatever the word here is. So for example, the surface uh, if we have a speed of 5 meters per second, it means our speed, or velocity in this case, is 5 meters a second relative to the surface. Um, you should get used to using the term velocity as well. It basically means speed, but relative to a specific body or object. As an example, um, 
the relative velocity of the rocket to the planet's surface at the moment is zero. However, the relative velocity of the planet's surface to, sorry, the orbital velocity of the planet is going to be several thousand meters per second because it's traveling around the sun. However, if you take it as the relative velocity to the sun rather than the orbital velocity, it's going to be pretty close to zero because the orbit is near perfectly circular. The planet is neither getting further away from the sun nor getting close to the sun, it's simply going around it. Now, this may seem like nitpicking, and it may also seem a little bit confusing, but trust me, once you get your head around it, it's a very important concept, and you will learn it quite quickly. It Basically, it's just important to make sure that this indicator is always set relative to what you want to do. So if you're trying to dock at a space station, for example, you want to set the space station as the target. That way you know what your speed is relative to the space station, rather than relative to, say, the planet which could be potentially disastrous. Okay, um, so throttle up to full, and then we're just going to press the space button to engage the first uh, to engage the first stage. And off we go. You use the WAST keys to control, so we're going to try tilting this using D, and you see off we go. Now, on the nav ball here, we have, as I pause the game, an indicator. This indicator here is your prograde marker. That's the direction your rocket is currently traveling in. This marker in the middle is the direction your rocket is currently facing. These are two very different things. Rockets have inertia, which basically means once they start moving in one direction, they'll keep moving in that direction and it takes a lot of energy to get them to move in a different direction. So even though you're pointing your rocket in a different direction, its momentum is going to be taking it in another direction. So don't confuse the, the direction the rocket is facing with the direction the rocket is traveling. So if I kill the engine here, you can see that even though I'm pointing in a completely different direction, my prograde direction is different. I'll fire up the engine again. And you can see that eventually the prograde will go in the direction I'm facing. You can see down here as well how much fuel I have left in that particular engine and um, fuel stack combination as well as up here as well in the top right hand corner. And you can see here my relative velocity to the surface so if I decrease the throttle a tad. You see I'm now I've just passed into a different atmospheric band so I'm now actually accelerating even though I'm barely putting in any uh, force at all. The altimeter getting higher and higher. And look down and see the remnants of the space center there. Now I'm going to put in a huge burst of speed here and you can see fuel is nearly and is now out. Now if I tilt the nav ball around here you'll see a new marker. That is retrograde. If you were to burn in that direction you will reduce your velocity down to zero eventually and then you'll start to get negative velocity and that will become the prograde marker. So, for example, if I was trying to dock with a space station and I'm moving too fast, I would burn in this direction to reduce my speed. If I was going too slow and needed to catch up with it, I'd burn in the prograde direction and that would increase my speed. So this rocket is now pretty much dead. If we press the M key on the keyboard, can see a map and we can see the projected pathway. So you can see we're not going to get into orbit, we're going to get up quite high, 108 meters roughly, and then come crashing back down to Kerbin. Not good. However, we can accelerate time and we can get over this uh, more easily. 
So this rocket was a little bit crap, really. It didn't actually do that much for us. It got us out of the atmosphere, but it didn't get us into orbit. It's just not powerful enough. There are other changes that we could make that could possibly get us into orbit, improving the aerodynamics of the rocket, perhaps. Uh, planning our ascent a little bit better. We'll get onto that later. But really, we need a bit more power than this. So join me in the next episode when we look at building stacks and slightly more advanced piloting. I'll see you next time, assuming that I land in the drink and can be recovered. Take care, y'all.